Hi, beautiful friends and book lovers. I hope that you're all doing well. I am excited to film this February 2024 wrap up. Um, but I want to try maybe a little bit of like a new structure to my wrap ups this year. So I want to start these videos by telling you um, what I'm currently reading and then get into the books that I have read um, in that month. And then if you stay for the end of the video, I'm just gonna go over like different TV shows and like movies that I watched in that month um, because I also love to chat about that stuff too. So if you're new here, my name is Heather and here at Heather's Book Review, I typically uh, read thrillers, mysteries, but I will read just about whatever I'm feeling. Um, so I want to start by telling you guys what I'm currently reading. And I look to the side a lot cause I'm looking at my notes. Um, my current, I usually have like an e-read, a physical book, and then an audio book all at the same time. Um, especially if you're new here, we just welcomed our second child, um, our baby girl, and my hands are busy a lot of the time. <laughs> so, um, instead of like reading physical books, I've been reading a lot of like e-reads. Um, so I typically have like three books going at once, which sometimes is like chaotic, but it hasn't felt like super crazy lately, so I don't want to jinx it. But my current e-read is A Talent for Murder, um, written by Peter Swanson. I was so excited um, when I saw that I was approved for this. The um, tentative, or expected I should say, pub date is July 4th, but it did say ex um, expected by that pub date. So I don't know, maybe that's subject to change. But a huge thank you to William Morrow Publishing for letting me read this. It is so good so far. It is about a woman who thinks that her husband like might be a serial killer. So it's crazy. I'm super, super hooked so far. And then my physical book, this was actually so much fun. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, it's just the same handle. Um, or even here on YouTube, if you're subscribed, um, when I post a poll, you will get notified and... Um, I posted four different books and then asked you guys to vote for my next read and Murder Road by Simone St. James won. So I've started this. I'm currently on chapter five. Um, this is what I chose for my book of the month for March. Um, if you're unfamiliar with book of the month, all of these books behind me, this little square are uh books from book of the month and i will leave my referral link in the description box below and if you go through that um you get a discounted first month and then i also get a free book which is sweet because it means more books to review here which of course i love but i'm loving this it's about this really super young couple um who are on their way to a honeymoon and then they like see this injured woman on the side of the road so they pick her up and they ask for help but like or they ask her if she needs help, but then just like some spooky stuff starts happening. So obviously not that far in, but it is super good so far. And I'm also doing a buddy read um, with some bookish pals for this. So that's also exciting. And then another book, when I saw I was able to listen to this, I was super stoked. That is Daughter of Mine, written by Miranda, or sorry, Megan Miranda. And that is coming out April 9th. Thank you so much, Simon and Schuster, always coming through Simon & Schuster with these thrillers, but I am super excited for this one. I'm about four chapters in so far, um, and it's about this small town. Um, there's like a huge, and there's a lake in this town, and since there hasn't been any rain, um, stuff is starting to like, you know, stuff that has sunk to the bottom of the lake, if you will, is starting to show, and there's like this car there, um, that like the whole town is like, oh my gosh, why is there a car? Did somebody get murdered? What the heck? So that's about where I'm at right now. Like I said, I just started, I'm like three or four chapters in. Um, but yeah, so that is what I'm currently reading. So all of those books will most likely be featured in my March wrap up. Um, assuming that I finish all three, which I'm um, pretty confident that I will. But let's go ahead and get into the books that I read in February. I am so freaking excited because I have found my first five-star book of 2024. And insane, insane, because it's not a thriller, which I'm like just shocked. Um, but let's just go ahead. It is The Frozen River by Ariel Lahone. Um, got this from book of the month in January of this year, I think you guys, oh, 
I was seeing this everywhere and I was seeing a lot of people say that like it's already one of their favorite books of 2024 and I would have to say I'm totally jumping on that bandwagon. This is a historical fiction. It is amazing. All right, you guys, mom life. Little Miss just wants to be held. So we're gonna do the rest of this video bouncing and holding her. Um, but I finished this book and I've never had a book before in my life that gave me goosebumps. It literally gave me goosebumps when I finished it. Like when I finished that last word, like you know how you, when you listen to music sometimes, like really good music, like how it'll give you goosebumps. Like when I used to listen to Adele, back when she like first came out, I would get goosebumps listening to her, which is like, I don't know. I don't get that a lot. This is the first book ever in my life, in my life that gave me goosebumps upon finishing it. Like it literally is, it's so good. It's about this woman. First off, it takes place in the late 1700s, okay? And it's about this woman who's a midwife and she keeps a diary, um, just like a journal about like her day-to-day -day, um, life and just what happens to her during the day, okay? And one of the women in the town um, calls her, calls upon her, if you will, doesn't call her, but, you know, sends for her and basically is, you know, she gets there and the woman's like, I've been raped by um, these two men. One of them is a prestigious judge and don't worry, this is, spoil this is not spoilers, it's literally in the inside flap. Um, but her diary is at like the center of these trials back then as like evidence, if you will. Um, oh my gosh, you guys, it's so, it's just, please read it. Like, even if you don't like historical fiction, just give it a chance, like read it because it is such a good book. It is such good writing. Just like, uh, you know, you guys know I'm like shitting on some of the thrillers nowadays. Cause I'm like, this writing is just like sucks. You know what I mean? No, this is like amazing, actually amazing writing. So five stars for sure. It's definitely a go get this book now, hands down, hands down. Like I can say it with full confidence that if you read this book, you will know what a good book it is. Like it's just, I have, I would recommend this to anybody. It is such a good, such a powerful such a beautifully written book. I cannot say enough good things. Um, an e-read. And it is uh, Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. This is a massive thank you to Celadon Publishing. Thank you so much, Celadon. Um, this book came out in uh, March. Yeah. Well, it is March. It's March 8th while I'm filming this. But I think it's pub date. Literally, was like four days ago. Um, and I was reading this at the end of February. And it is a thriller about a woman who um was accused of murdering her best friend basically and like the entire town that she grew up in like everybody was like oh you're guilty um because she was at like the scene of the crime with her friend's blood on her and like she can't remember anything that happened so everyone's like oh convenient like you can't remember and so she goes back to her hometown because someone's doing a podcast about the murder okay and that's basically where I'm gonna stop I am giving this four and a half stars and I'm also giving it a go get this book now. It is a really fast paced thriller. I believe it's the author's debut. I'll write in the text if I'm wrong, um, but I don't think I am. I think it's a debut novel or at least it's her first novel, adult novel, but I'm pretty sure it's just like a genuine debut. And oh my God, her writing is amazing and she's so funny. There's so much humor in this thriller that like I really appreciated. Um, and I thought it was really good. Like you're guessing the entire time for like multiple parts of the book. And I didn't feel like anything was very predictable. So yeah, I mean, I thought it was really good. I think that if you do get this thriller, um, there is a lot of hype for it right now, for sure. Um, if you're looking on Instagram or maybe just here on YouTube, hi Finn, our dog just turned six today, you guys. I'll put a little picture of him here. He's so stinky. You're such a good boy. You are such a good boy. Yes, you are. You good boy. Anyways, I would say the hype is totally, totally well-deserved. I loved it. And I thought it was, it's a thriller with like heavy content for sure. But then like the humorous dialogue that the 
um, author Amy created. It's good. It's a good thriller. I really liked it. Four and a half stars. All right. And then the last book that I read in February, um, a massive thank you to St. Martin's Press. That is House of Glass by Sarah Peckin. And look at this gorgeous cover. Like, look at it. I obviously am not holding it, but I know. I know what it looks like with that beautiful, beautiful purple. This book comes out August 5th. Um, so thank you, St. Martin's Press, for letting me get a early start to reading it. I love Sarah Pekinen. I do. I love her so much. I love her books. I love her books that she writes with Greer Hendricks. Like, I just think she's great. I think she's awesome. So when I saw that I was approved for this, ooh, I was excited. So this is about a woman who um, helps children when their parents are going through a divorce. And her job is basically to go to the child's house and then kind of suss out both parents, suss out the environment that the child's living in. And then at the end of her job, if you will, she, um, it, she writes up like a, a document saying like who she thinks the child to live with. So it's a big deal. Like both parents obviously want to win her over. Um, but this case is a little different because the child um, has gone through something traumatic by um, apparently witnessing the family nanny. Yeah. Fall from one of the windows in their house. And ever since that happened, she um, has become a selective mute, meaning she chooses not to talk um, because of this traumatic experience. Um, so the, our main character goes to the house and um, basically she has to like find out what the heck happened. Like how did this woman just fall from a window? Um, but when she's there, it's like, the family's kind of weird. The grandma lives there too. Um, she feels like the girl wants to talk to her and has like things to say, but like she just can't because she's chosen not to talk right now kind of thing. So um, yeah, that's basically all I will say about like what the book is about. Um, overall, I'm giving it an enjoyable read. And if I had to give it a star rating, like a 3.75. So the reason I'm rating the book this way is because it felt predictable to me. Um, I would say the first half didn't feel predictable. Like I was like, oh, okay, like, can you hear her little baby snores? She's so cute. At first it didn't feel predictable. I was like, what the heck is going on? But then once I reached like 50 or 60, I was like, okay, like, I think I know where this is going. And I was right. So I was a little bit bummed about that because you guys know I don't love when my thrillers are like super predictable. Um, but I will say it felt unique for sure. Um, and the, one of the unique things about this book for me that I ended up liking was there were kind of two storylines going on. Like with our main character, we have obviously like the story I was just telling you guys about, but then also like kind of a crime story from her past that I won't get too much into. Um, but she's basically investigating, um, the death of her mother. So you have like two plot lines going on. But it didn't feel like it was like overdone. Like it didn't feel like it was too much. You know what I mean? Like or too confusing. So I actually really did appreciate that about the book. And I was hooked with both plot lines. I thought like maybe at initially I was like, oh, I'm only going to care about like, you know, the synopsis of the book of like with the little girl and everything. But no, I actually was hooked on both ends. Um, so yeah, I thought it was a good read. I think it's an enjoyable read for sure. Um, I'm not saying like, oh my gosh, go buy it right now, like that kind of thing, but I think it's an enjoyable read and, um, yeah, that's basically all I have to say about that. All right. And now for the new part of my wrap ups, if you want to listen to what I have been watching, that's what I'm going to talk about right now. So I finished all season one of Abbott elementary. And if you're new here, I am a teacher. Um, YouTube is just a fun hobby of mine. But I'm almost done with season two as well. And it's just, it's just a funny show about these teachers in Philadelphia. For all my fellow teachers out there, it's adorable. And it's like The Office, which is my all-time favorite show. Um, because it's like a documentary-esque style, like The Office. Like with the cameras, like where the characters like look at the cameras. Like when another character is saying something stupid, you know, like I love that kind of stuff. So it's hilarious. I am so, so, so super hooked. So if anybody watches it, let me know. Like I am rooting for Gregory and Janine. Like 
I love them so much. But yeah, I'm only like, I think I'm 13 episodes in this season two. And I want to say there are like 20 or so episodes. So don't spoil it for me. Next show that I watched all of season one and just started season two is The Bear. You guys, if you follow me on Instagram, I already said, I already admitted that we are late to the game on this, my husband and I. But oh my gosh, loved it. Like the acting is absolutely incredible. And I'm so excited for uh, season two. And I love that it takes place in Chicago because you guys know I'm out here in the burbs. So it's just kind of cool that it's supposed to be like a local show, if you will. But yeah, loving that. Oh my gosh, incredible acting. And then lastly, my guilty pleasure is Love Island. But it's got to be Love Island UK. And I think it's just because I honestly love UK accents. Like honestly, you guys, oh my gosh. I just, I loved it. It was the um, Love Island All Stars. I, you know, I could care less for Love Island USA or like Love Island Australia. It's really just the Love Island UK accents that I'm here for, like truthfully. And if you've watched the show, like Anton's on it and he's got that Scottish accent, like, oh my gosh, I literally could just listen to these guys all day, literally all day. But it was really cool. I've seen, I think almost every season of Love Island UK and it was really cool to see a lot of the people back, but that is my guilty pleasure. So if anybody else watches that, like, let me know. I'm not gonna spoil who wins, but it was just really cool to see a lot of the old Islanders come back. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I've been watching. We haven't watched any movies, but ooh, ooh, she's dreaming. She um, is pretty colicky like around nighttime. So uh, we don't have a lot of time for movies at all. Um, but yeah, shows for sure. I watch Abbott Elementary by myself and Love Island. My husband's not about to be watching Love Island, let me tell you. He would rather literally do anything else. <laughs> Nor would I want to watch that with him. Um, like just personally, you know, like it would just, he's, I just know he would be making like comments the whole time. And I'm out here trying to find out who is dating. Okay. Who's going to date? Who's going to get booted from the Island? I don't need any commentary from the peanut gallery, <laughs> but we do watch the bear together for sure. And we both really, really like that. So yeah, let me know what you guys are watching. Let me know what you're reading. Uh, yeah. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye you guys.